Hello everyone, my name is Martin Cardenas and today we'll be talking about a prisoner's dilemma applied to the North Korean and the United States conflict. So basically here we have the prisoner's dilemma matrix in which uh, both players can actually defend or attack. Um, here will be North, North Korea. And over here we will have the United States of America. Regarding the intercontinental ballistic missiles that North Korea has been recently developing, uh, this presents an imminent threat for the United States. Therefore, uh, President Trump should take immediate action about this international security problem. As for now, the United States has the upper hand due to its increased military power and uh, increased amount of allies. Therefore, they should make the first move. So when we analyze this conflict from a prisoner's dilemma outline, we can see that North Korea can either defend or attack, and the United States can either defend or attack. So therefore, if both defend, nothing will happen. So be zero for the United States and zero for North Korea, right? But if the United States attacks, it'll be one for the United States and minus two for North Korea if North Korea defends. And vice versa will happen here. So in the States, we have minus two, and North Korea will have one. But if both of them attack, they will both lose, which will be the worst outcome for everyone. Here we can see that if both countries defend, they will uh, stay at peace and won't lose anything. But if one country defends and the other one attacks, the country that attacked will lose money, but uh, the country that will defend while the other one is attacking will lose pretty much everything due to the nuclear power of the opponent. And if both attack, it will be complete destruction, and they will both lose. So when we analyze the matrix, um, I would like to take into account first that if North Korea defends uh, if the United States defends, it will be zero, but if he attacks, it will be one. So it's better off attacking than defending, because one is better than zero. And therefore, if North Korea attacks uh, in the United States defense, it will lose two. But if USA attacks, well, North Korea attacks, it will just lose one. So it's better to lose one than to lose two. Uh, here we have a standard deviation which will lead into a dominant strategy for attacking for the United States. It's always better attacking regardless of what the opponent is doing. As this conflict was aborted by a rationalist point of view, it is safe to say that rationalists are always self-interested and are looking for their best outcome. So here, the United States will prefer always attacking and will have a dominant strategy here in attacking. In conclusion, the United States should take a preemptive attack to take the upper hand over North Korea. Therefore, this will give him a strategic advantage and will predict it by the prisoner's dilemma. It will always have a better outcome. So, to finish this conflict, the United States should attack North Korea. All right, uh, that will be it for today, guys. I hope you learned something new and thanks for watching. Hello， 大家好，欢迎大家继续关注博弈论。今天我们介绍一个博弈论中的经典案例——智珠博弈。它是由约翰·纳什在1950年提出的。假设我们有一头大猪，一头小猪，猪圈的食物由一个杠杆控制，在一头是食物，另一头是杠杆。只有推动石头砸到了杠杆，就会有十个单位的食物弹出。大猪、小猪都可以去推动石头。我们假设小猪去推石头，大猪在食物旁边等待。那么最后，大猪会得到十分之九的食物，而小猪从猪圈的另一头跑过来，只能吃到十分之一的食物。如果两只猪一起去推石头，然后一起跑过去吃饭
，最后的分配是大猪七，小猪三。如果让大猪去推石头，而小猪在食物旁边等待，最后的结果是大猪六，小猪四。我们这里还有一个假设：如果大猪或者小猪单独去推石头，那么他们会消耗两个单位食物的能量；如果一起去推石头，那么每个人消耗一个单位的食物能量。那么问题来了，谁会去推石头呢？用博弈论报酬的矩阵，我们可以分析他们的选择。下面的红色数字是扣除推石头消耗的能量以后的最终结果。我们按照分析囚徒困境的方法来分析它们。小猪会觉得，如果大猪去推石头，我最好选择在食物旁边等待；如果大猪不去推石头，那么我最好也选择在食物旁边等待。所以，小猪会选择在食物旁边等待，这是它的最优选择。大猪通过分析发现，小猪无论如何都会选择在食物旁边等待。那么我就只好去推石头了，因为如果大猪去推石头，它还能获得一些食物。所以这里出现了一个纳什均衡的均衡点，这就是小猪等待大猪去推石头。这个例子可以生动的说明一些小资产阶级和大资产阶级在一个经济体中的关系，可以解释很多搭便车的现象，就是中小企业不会进行大规模的技术创新，而是采取跟随策略，就像小猪一样。等待那些大猪把产品形成以后，仿制大公司的新产品开始销售，同时还说明了企业的责任和分工。大企业要有大企业的思维，小企业要有小企业的策略。首先，大企业要承担更多的责任，而小企业不能为了承担更大的责任而失去自己的利益追求。好了，今天就给大家介绍这些，希望大家继续关注，我们下期再见。North Korea has made nuclear bombs smaller, lighter, even standardized. You know they can produce in mass. Therefore, in other words, if you look at all these kinds of things, North Korea has become very powerful and threatening nuclear power. But North Korean behavior is one thing, but another one is. Our government position, South Korean government position, American government position, Japanese government position have become much stronger. They have been now relying on. They will be strengthening sanctions and pressure against North Korea. Now we are talking about preemptive strikes on North Korea, where our government is trying to introduce kill chain, which can kill chain means is kind of deterrence measure. If we detect North Korean intention to launch missiles, we would make a preemptive strikes on those nuclear uh, uh, missile sites. And more than that, and we also our government has declared massive punishment retaliation on North Korea if North Korea really launch nuclear missiles. Therefore, now we have really we see kind of game of chicken. No way out, because. There is no place for dialogue and negotiation. That makes me really <coughs> worrisome on the current development in, on the Korean Peninsula. Therefore, in other words, you have you know, sanctions and pressures. You have uh, deterrence and also add evidence through the SAD, coming in a high altitude in the aerial defense system. It's a defense. Therefore, you have a sanction, deterrence, defense, but no dialogue and negotiation. The no way out then makes us very, very fearful of current development on the Korean Peninsula.